But um, what struck me most about Battery Day was how many questions it left me with. There's so many, there's so many unanswered questions. They created more questions than they answered. That's how I feel about it. I don't know how you guys feel about it. So this is my outline of what we're going to cover today, or what I'm going to talk about. Uh, this is what I'm going to talk about. So who's going to make? Who's going to make the, L liquid, the lithium iron phosphate and medium uh, plus nickel based cells? Will partners be licensed to make the new high nickel cells? Will lithium iron phosphate and other cells also go to the new 4680 format? Will they go tabless? Will they use silicon anodes? Other improvements? Um, are we on? Is everything going good? Abigail, are we doing okay? Oh, she's not watching. How big will cell factories be? How many? Where will they be located? Uh, how will the diversity of chemistries shake out? We've got at least three different chemistries. Um, how many are they going to make of each one? What vehicles and what storage devices will use which chemistries? Let's talk about the future compact model that's coming. How fast will the new cells charge? What is the cycle life of new cells? And is this a million mile battery? These are a lot of questions I'm seeing people talking about. Um, will there be more news about mining? We know about lithium. What about nickel? What about other mining? What's the next Tesla event day? What's the future of full self-driving and robo-taxi, which Elon talked about um, in the in the annual meeting. When's the full uh, full self-driving version four chipset coming? What's happening with the foundational rewrite? What's the impact on profit, market cap, and share price? So that's so that is the that's the outline of what I'm going to talk about today. And at the end, we're going to have a Q and A. So you can see the outline here. Eh, I'm learning on this. The outlines over. The outlines over here. Um, and you can see at the bottom, um, question, you guys can chat all you want in the chat. Um, if you have a question for the end, the audience questions, save the questions till the end. I do have a family member who's paying attention and taking notes and will hopefully give me good questions, but I'll be looking more at the end about what questions you guys have. So we're gonna start with what I wanted to talk about, which is who's gonna make these cells? So um, what we know is, sorry, one second. What we know is Tesla is going to make, um, Tesla is going to make the new nickel based, the high nickel cells. Um, Tesla is going to make the high nickel cells. That's the cells that they presented at the event. The, the high nickel cells, the high content that are going to have all the advantages that they discussed. But Tesla was very clear. Let me see if I can find my... Uh, okay, let's liven this up. They talked about... Here we're going to go here. Let's see. They talked about um, these other... I'm still learning how to do this. Let's see. What did I do? They talked about these other chemistries. So we start with, with. Um, let's see how I can do. I'm still learning, folks. Sorry. They talked about uh, the cost of nickel, iron, and cobalt. They're getting rid of cobalt. They are still going to use iron phosphate. I think iron phosphate is a huge, very important chemistry for Tesla's future. I think that um, Elon talked about it a bit. I think a lot of people are understating the role of iron phosphate. So the question I had was, okay, we know that Tesla is going to make, and the, the reason iron phosphate matters is because it's so inexpensive, even though it doesn't have the energy density of the other chemistries, of the nickel-based chemistries, it's good enough, especially with improvements, and it's so much less expensive. So I thought that was a really important detail. And um, when you look at the diversified cathode approach, you can see they're planning to do iron-based on the... Uh, on the far left of the screen is the iron-based chemistries for some applications, nickel manganese and high nickel. So we know all that's coming. So... Who's going to make all these cells? We know Tesla's going to make the high nickel cells. We don't really know who's going to make the other cells. Um, that was kind of left out. 
Um, it's pretty clear that Tesla is going to make the high nickel cells. It's not clear if anyone else will also make the high nickel cells. They didn't really answer that question. Are they going to license the making of the high nickel cells to someone else? Um, who's going to make the iron phosphate cells? Now, Elon did answer. Um, Elon did answer this question. Um, are you guys making 4680 cells with three different cathodes? Or when you talked about a diversified approach, this was just yesterday, day before yesterday, yesterday. Holmar's catalog, uh, Omar asked whether that was gonna happen. And Elon said that the other cathodes, the non-high energy cathodes will be done by suppliers and that Tesla is going to do the high energy nickel themselves, which means nobody else is gonna do them. And a big bombshell, by the way, was the high nickel cells are already in some vehicles. We're not sure what vehicles. I'm guessing in, in Elon's car, uh, maybe in that Cybertruck, maybe in some semis. Um, but so that, that answered a big question that I had, which is that CATL, LG Chem, Panasonic will be making some of the other chemistries. My best guess is that... Uh, that CATL is going to make the iron phosphate batteries. Excuse me. CATL is going to make the iron phosphate batteries. Panasonic is going to continue making the nickel cobalt aluminum batteries. And LG Chem maybe is going to be making these. There's a there's an intermediate battery that they kind of talked about, but they didn't go into much depth about was a nickel manganese battery, which is not nickel cobalt aluminum. You know, Panasonic is making nickel cobalt aluminum batteries for Tesla. And they didn't talk about that, but Panasonic, Panasonic is expanding their lines and they're in the Tesla factory and I think they have a long-term contract. So the diversity is more than what they said at battery day because you have at the high end, up at the high end, you've got the, the high nickel, high energy density batteries that Tesla is going to be making in their, uh, in their factories. Then you've got, at the low end, you've got the lithium iron phosphate, which we know CATL is making for Tesla in China. And so that's a good reason to think that CATL is gonna make more of those for Tesla elsewhere. We've got Panasonic, we've got this middle area, which at the battery day event, they described as nickel manganese, but we know there's nickel cobalt aluminum too. So is it only nickel manganese? It can't be because they're gonna be using nickel cobalt aluminum too. We don't know how many chemistries are in that middle range. I think there's at least two, nickel cobalt aluminum and this new nickel manganese they're talking about. And there's a good chance they'll be doing some nickel manganese cobalt as well, maybe from LG Chem. So that's a really uh, exciting detail that they kind of left hang in there and didn't really answer that question. Um, another big question related to these other cells, the non-high nickel cells is, are they going to also be, um, are they going to go to the same cell size? Tesla is using this 4680 cylinder size, 46 millimeter diameter. Let me find that, the 4680 cell. Um, this is the 4680 cell. So the 4680 cell, 46, uh, 46 millimeter diameter, 80 millimeter in height, uh, compares to the previous 2170. It's more than twice the diameter. It's 10 millimeters taller. Um, there's a lot of advantages to this cell format. Will the other cells also go to the 4680 format? Now, with lithium iron phosphate, I believe they could do that right away. And not only will they go to this size, I'm going to get rid of this. Not only will they go to this size, but will they also go to tabless? Will they also go to... Will they also go to the dry process for, um, I don't know if dry process even makes sense for lithium iron phosphate, but for the other nickel chemistries, will they go to the dry process? I think it makes sense for them. Will they all go to silicon, ano silicon anodes? I'm pretty sure Elon or Drew said that they would use silicon, excuse me, that they would use silicon anodes for the other batteries. Sorry, I, my throat gets dry when I do this. So. I think my think my, my guess is the answer is yes that all the other battery chemistries will migrate that nickel cobalt aluminum coming from Panasonic is probably not going to change in the short run but down the road lithium iron phosphate will definitely go to the 4680 size 
I think that the nickel manganese that they described will probably go to the 4680 size. They will probably all use dry process. They will probably all use tabless. Um, tabless not, is, has two advantages. One, it helps with um, reducing cell heating, but it also makes manufacturing efficiency better. And they'll all go to silicon anodes. So I think we're gonna see, and I think the silicon anodes were actually cheaper. So they're gonna save money on that. So uh, that's gonna be a big change. I think it's gonna take a few years, like Panasonic's not gonna roll over and turn 2170 into 4680 overnight. But within three years, I would expect that all of Tesla's cells are gonna be the 4680 size, using dry process, using tabless, using silicon anodes, and that's gonna improve the batteries for everything, for all vehicles that Tesla is using and all, op all options that Tesla's using. So, um, actually I need to do that, sorry. So that means we get rid of that. We've done size and features of other cells, that's what we just finished, and now I wanna to move to factory size. So factory size was, uh, this was fascinating. Um, we saw this image, there was a lot of other images, but um, they talked about how the improvements mean that they can do more with less space. And this is probably the best example of that they can take the current planned size for the Nevada Giga factory, which would be that as big as the, the 150 gigawatt hour thing there and produce 150 gigawatt hours. And they would be able to produce one terawatt hour in a smaller space. Now, this was interesting. And the reason I wanted to talk about this the reason I wanted to talk about this was, well, wait a minute. When they talked, they never talked about building a one terawatt hour factory. They never talked about doing a one terawatt hour factory. They talked about doing uh, 200 gigawatt hours. They're gonna do 10 gigawatt hours in the Cato Road uh, location they have in Fremont. And then it sounded like they were gonna do 200 gigawatt hours at Austin, 200 gigawatt hours at Berlin, and 200 gigawatt hours in Shanghai um, at some point in the near future. I think the number was, I think I have this, uh, I think the number was, oh boy, that's big. No, come on, no. The number was 100 gigawatt hours Sorry. So it's 100 gigawatt hours in 2022. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. That's really important. Um, and it's three terawatt hours by 2010. So if they're doing 100 gigawatt hours in 2022, then there's not gonna be a one terawatt hour factory in 2022. And it's not clear when they're gonna to get to a one terawatt hour factory. I suppose a theory would be that Giga Austin, um, Giga Berlin and Giga Shanghai would each go to one terawatt hour by 2030. I don't, I don't buy that theory. I think they're gonna build more battery factories in different places, which I'm gonna talk about. Uh, and I think I was gonna talk about that here. So what do I have there? Let's see. How big will set, so one of my, my next question was, how big will cell factories be? How many will there be? Where, where will they be located? So this is one of those moments where I think Elon and Drew were under promising and they're gonna over deliver. I don't think they're gonna produce three terawatt hours by 2030. I think they're gonna produce 10 terawatt hours by 2030. Um, I may be optimistic, but I think that's where they're heading. I don't, I don't know that they're gonna get enough battery supply from elsewhere. I don't see a reason why they wouldn't scale up to producing more faster. And Elon did say he thought it might be sooner than 2030 they would get to three terawatt hours. So where? Well, pretty clearly Austin. Uh, maybe Nevada because the lithium clays are in Nevada um, and there's a lot of room there, but I've, I've heard there's a shortage of engineering talent. There's a shortage of staff to work in the facilities in Nevada. So it may be, Austin appears to be a much better bet. Shanghai, pretty clear location where it would make sense they would make batteries there for their factory there. Um, and Berlin, uh, very clear. And then where else could they make batteries? Australia seems like a brilliant choice for a Terra factory. Tons of uh, natural resources in Australia, tons of land. Um, also maybe a good place for a solar factory. Uh, not clear that their car market is big enough to support building cars in Australia, but maybe. Um, maybe there would be a car factory in Australia as well. 
India. India is a tricky one. I love talking about this. A lot of people have talked about Giga India, whether Tesla is going to build a factory in India. India is a very challenging location. I'm going to take this off. India is a very challenging location because of regulatory problems in India, particularly with the car. And also the car market is very small. The car market for Tesla type vehicles for for expense frankly with vehicles that are, that are moderately expensive in north america europe and canada australia whatever um india is poor and most vehicles that people buy in india are much smaller it's not clear that there's a, a big enough market to sustain even the twenty five thousand dollar robo taxi tesla was talking about uh the twenty five thousand dollar compact they were talking about but india is really big on solar and india is really big on needing a reliable grid so if Tesla could work with the prime minister, uh, the leadership of the Indian government and build a Terra factory to build batteries in India, which they just announced some effort to invest in ba more batteries, they have some big solar projects in India. So maybe Tesla could get into solar in India and maybe that could eventually lead to vehicles. I think the cyber van, if you check my channel, I have a video where I talk about a Tesla minibus or cyber van. I think that could really do well in India because there's a lot of mass transit and they could really deliver mass transit. And, and this is an important detail about why India matters, why Africa matters, why you know South Asia in general, Pakistan, um, why China matters. They have really polluted air because of all the diesel and, and gasoline powered vehicles. And if you can shift them to electric, you're gonna save a lot of lives. You're gonna improve the quality of life for a billion or more people. Um, so that's that's why, you know, and, and not to mention you're gonna reduce global pollution, global consumption of fossil fuels and all the problems with that. So I think that's huge. Um, so I think this, this, the big question they left was why did they have an image of a Terra factory? And then they talked about, we're only gonna have 100 gig. I think they talked about doing 200 gigawatt hours. No, I'm not paid by Coca-Cola. Um, I think they talked about doing 200 gigawatt hours in each location, which doesn't seem like enough. But let's talk about that for another second. If you're gonna make 10 gigawatt hours at Fremont, 10 gigawatt hours, each Model 3, I'm, I'm oversimplifying when I say this, but a Model 3 uses 50 kilowatt hours. So 20 Model 3s would be a megawatt hour, 20,000 Model 3s would be a gigawatt hour, so 200,000 Model 3s would be 10 gigawatt hours. So Fremont would be making enough batteries I'm oversimplifying, I know, and I, you could do your numbers a different way and say 75, whatever, but it's in the ballpark of 200,000 Model 3s and Model Ys that would be supported by the 10 gigawatt hours produced at Fremont. But let's get bigger. 2022, they're talking about 100 gigawatt hours. That would support 2 million Model 3s and Ys. And that doesn't include the lithium iron phosphate, the nickel manganese, the nickel cobalt aluminum batteries that they're using to produce everything else. So the, you know, something that I think Wall Street totally missed, anybody, most people watching this totally missed was if they're gonna produce 100 gigawatt hours of batteries in 2022, and all these other um, companies or suppliers are gonna be producing more batteries for Tesla, um, if, if all that's gonna happen, how many vehicles are they gonna make in 2022? Because they're gonna deliver, let's be clear, they're gonna deliver 500,000 vehicles in 2020, ballpark, maybe 510, maybe 490, maybe 520, who knows, but something around 500,000 vehicles. In 2022, if they do 100 gigawatt hours of just the new nickel-based chemistries that are only going in vehicles, we're gonna talk about what where the other things are going in a minute, that's at least 2 million vehicles produced and delivered, and it might be more than that. Because you've got all the nickel, you got the 500,000 they're producing now without the nickel-based chemistries. So you got that 2 million plus 500,000, and they're growing the nickel cobalt aluminum, and they're adding the nickel manganese, and they're adding the lithium iron phosphate in China. So I think they might be producing 3 million vehicles in 2022, which is staggering growth. So that's huge. So let's see. Um, What's next on my list here? So one of the big questions that I had, I'm gonna switch here, let's see, I'm still learning this. 
Let's see, we're gonna get rid of that. Okay, we're on chemistry diversity. We've moved on to chemistry diversity. I gotta put my glasses on to see my notes here. So, um, and I think this is really, really important. Diversified cathode, is that it? Okay, I'm gonna block my face, so I'll, I'll shrink this a little bit here. So, we've got um, lithium iron phosphate over, over here, we've got nickel manganese here, and we've got high nickel here. So high nickel, the high nickel stuff is semi. Tesla semi is high nickel. The Plaid Model S, the Roadster, the Trimotor Cybertruck, that's gonna be high nickel. Anything that is Plaid, powertrain, or semi. Semi really needs high nickel because every pound of battery is one pound less of cargo. They have a maximum of 80,000 pounds of cargo in a tractor trailer in the United States and probably similar limits in other countries. So, sorry, if they can get, that, so the, high, the semi is only gonna be high nickel batteries. The Plaid Model S is only gonna be high nickel batteries. The tri-motor Cybertruck will be only. I think one of the interesting questions here is what about the other Cybertrucks? What about the single motor Cybertruck? Does that really need high nickel batteries? And remember, if you remember back to the Cybertruck, um, if you remember back to the Cybertruck reveal, the tri-motor Cybertruck's gonna have 500 miles of range, would make, make sense to fit that with the high nickel batteries. The single motor rear wheel drive Cybertruck was only gonna have 250 miles of range. And the dual motor is only gonna have 300 miles of range. So my gut is that both single, and I've said this for a while, single motor and dual motor Cybertruck will be using iron phosphate batteries. There's a huge amount of volume, room under the Cybertruck uh, design, so it can hold a lot of battery cells. So I think iron phosphate makes the most sense to get the price down for the single motor and dual motor. I could see where they would offer the option of the nickel manganese batteries in the dual motor um, or maybe even in the single motor, so you can pay for extra range. When you're buying the vehicle, hey, an extra $5,000, you get you get more range. And a lot of people would pay for extra range. So the, the, the base model $40,000 uh, single motor rear wheel drive Cybertruck will be available for $40,000, but most people most people will pay $45,000 to get the extra battery life. That's that, the range, that's, that's a speculation. Um, in the middle category, you've got, it's, this is weird, I thought that this graphic, I th honestly I thought this graphic was just wrong. So you can see on the far, on the iron base side you see power pack and what looks like either power pack or mega pack. Which, and it totally makes sense that grid storage would go to iron phosphate. Iron phosphate is cheap and the, the mass doesn't matter and the volume doesn't matter, it's sitting still. It's not moving, you have plenty of room wherever you're putting these things. There's no re I don't even know, so I don't know why power wall's in the middle. They're showing power wall in the middle, you know, it, it's not that much bigger. The, the iron phosphate doesn't make it that much bigger. Um, the mass doesn't really matter if it's sitting in your garage. I didn't, I, I think that was a mistake. Um, they showed Model 3 and the compact on the iron base side, and they showed Model Y, Model S and Model X, I get, those are nickel manganese or those, you know, the, the high-end versions are gonna be high nickel. They're gonna be expensive vehicles. But the, uh, why is the Model Y in nickel manganese and the Model 3 is in iron-based? I didn't understand how they made that decision. That seemed a little odd. I think we're more likely to see a diversity of chemistries available for each vehicle. If they can standardize all the battery batteries, all the cells to be 4680, then I think it gets a lot easier to offer different battery choices in each vehicle. So you, you want the low end Model 3 or Model Y, you get the lithium iron phosphate and you pay less. You want the mid range, then you pay more and you get the nickel manganese and you get some extra range. And you wanna, you wanna get the performance model or you know, the high end model, you pay extra more for the high nickel batteries. So I, that's how I see the, um, that's how I see the, um, the chemistry diversity playing out. Um, number one, iron phosphate only in grid storage, and then a variety available in most vehicles. I even, to me, I could see Tesla offering a Model S with an iron phosphate pack <clears throat> with you know new structure and everything. They do everything to make Model S better. I could see them offering a Model S for $60,000 with 350 miles of range, and it would crush 
absolutely crush the luxury sedan market. Same thing with X. The Model X would crush the luxury SUV market if they offered uh, a uh, lithium iron phosphate version for $60,000, $65,000. It would just absolutely destroy the rest of the market. So I think, oh, so that uh, the one other question that I think this left was, what will be the proportions of the different chemistries? You've got the iron-based chemistries, you've got the high nickel chemistry, and you've got the metal nickel manganese chemistry, nickel cobalt aluminum chemistries. My gut is, first of all, grid storage is gonna be all iron phosphate. And that's gonna grow rapidly. So I think you're gonna see a huge volume of iron phosphate batteries getting poured out of China. Um, they said they're not gonna make their own batteries. I think the, I think CATL can probably produce iron phosphate batteries cheap enough that it doesn't advantage Tesla to use it and they just make a deal with CATL. Here, we want you to make it using these processes. We're gonna license these processes to you and you're only gonna sell them to us and you're gonna give us a long-term contract and so on. I, you know, Somehow they're gonna make some kind of deal with CATL and other battery manufacturers and have them scale up iron phosphate. And if you missed a key detail with iron phosphate, one of the challenges with the nickel-based chemistries is there isn't a lot of nickel available. They're trying to get more nickel mines they're trying to increase production of nickel, but that's a challenge going forward is where do we get enough nickel? And they have some solutions, but it's not fully solved. But iron is like, there's, an, there's a nearly, there's effectively an infinite amount of iron. There's no materials problem with getting materials for iron phosphate. So my theory is we're gonna see a mass increase, a monster increase in iron phosphate cells for grid storage. And I'm surprised they didn't talk about it more, but I don't see, they talked about going 1600X. The, where's that? I think I have that. Hang on. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, I don't know where, I, I don't know if I did what I did with that one. There was this slide where they talked about, no, I know what it is. Goal one, goal two. It was goal two. So goal two, I'm losing my face here for a second, but on the far side there you see 0 0.06, 0 0.06 terawatt hours. Put my face up here. Ah. Um, on the on the far side here you see 0 0.06 terawatt hours and it's gonna increase to 10 terawatt hours. Well, if you're gonna go from zero point, and that's all, that's all grid storage. That's all grid storage. It was weird. There's one this future EV in the middle of it. I didn't understand that, but this is pretty much all grid storage battery usage. So, so you're going to see a monster increase in iron phosphate. Um, it's almost like uh, nickel. The high nickel content is almost a distraction. That the high, the nickel stuff is almost a distraction. That iron phosphate is the real story. And I've been saying this for a while. I'm like big on. I'm Mr. Iron Phosphate, I guess. The you know the the increase in iron phosphate batteries is going to be stunning. They're going to 1600x. They're going to be you know it's it's insane how many how many lithium iron how much lithium iron phosphate battery production has to increase to get there but there's basically infinite supply of lithium there's infinite supply of iron and there's infinite supply of phosphate so you know it's just scaling up and you know the economies of scale are going to reduce costs the new processes are going to reduce costs so that's going to be amazing um and Tesla is going to be scaling up the high nickel. I'm not sure how much the nickel manganese chem. I almost wonder if the nickel manganese chemistry becomes irrelevant. The intermediate chemistries do they become irrelevant because iron phosphate floods grid storage, economies of scale reduce costs like unbelievably, all the other things, and then you're getting 300 miles of range in an iron phosphate vehicle anyway. Once you scale up the high nickel, I, I kind of wonder if nickel manganese and nickel cobalt aluminum eventually get phased out. We'll see. I mean, you know, they're going to improve too, but I don't know if their cost is, I don't know if they're going to cost less than the high nickel cells. And it's just a matter of maybe there's so much demand that they'll still need those cells anyway, and they'll offer them as a mid-range model. I, I haven't figured that out. That's a good thing we can talk about in the Q&A if people have ideas about that. So let's see. Uh, we're going to get rid of that. We're going to move on to the future compact Tesla. So that was, they left that one hanging. The future compact Tesla. And so what is the future compact Tesla? They had it under a tarp. Somebody asked Elon what the name of it is. He wouldn't name it. Um, they're being really secretive about it. I'm going to tell you my theory about the future compact Tesla. It's the future compact Tesla's plural. We know that Tesla has talked about a China-designed 
compact vehicle. We know that Tesla has talked about a Berlin design compact vehicle. So it seems to me there's going to be a European compact and there's going to be a Chinese compact and maybe there's going to be an American compact and they don't all have to be the same. The volumes of these things are going to be so high. They're going to be making millions of these a year in all three. They'll be making millions a year in all three places. It may be that they're going to say, you know what, we're going to have different designs. Now, it may be that the the underpinnings, the castings and structural battery will be the same across all three, but the exterior might be different. The exterior look might be different. The, what the design for China could conceivably be different than the design for, for Berlin. You know, Berlin, a lot of people in Germany are saying, oh, make something like a golf. You know, the VW Golf is like a really popular concept. So make something like a Golf, you know, that hatchback look. Well, maybe China, they'd rather have a small sedan. I don't know. Maybe they'd rather have something that looks more like a station wagon. Maybe a small SUV. It's not really clear what, you know, and I think Elon wants to let the China Design Studio figure it out for China and the Berlin Design Studio figure out Berlin. And then maybe they do both in the U.S. I don't know. I think they need probably a compact SUV for the U.S. I don't know. If, I don't think they want to do another sedan. So I think that's a really interesting and I think another detail is they're doing a front casting, a rear casting, and then the structural battery. And people who I don't know enough about this, I suspect that they're going to do a whole frame casting for that compact. That it won't be front, rear, and battery, it'll be the whole frame will be cast as one piece and the batteries would just be dropped in the middle and they'll still be structural somehow. I don't, that's where I'd like, I'm kind of in over my head here is like, I, it sounded like the, the structural battery was important and it's what connects the two, the two. So maybe you wouldn't do that, but I, I, I kind of have a hunch they're gonna, it's be gonna be small enough and they're gonna have gotten good enough at casting machines that's gonna be cast in one piece and that's gonna make manufacturing even more efficient. It's gonna reduce factory footprint size. It's gonna reduce cost per unit. It's gonna be spectacular. So um, that's my thoughts on future compact Tesla. A lot of people were talking about that. I should say, um, it seemed like a lot of media picked up on that and said, oh, they're not gonna deliver the compact for three years. Like. Who cares? That's not important. They're going to be produced. Did you guys miss that they're going to be producing millions of vehicles in 2022? Did you guys miss how many batteries they're going to be producing? It's crazy. It's crazy. They just don't understand. So, um, oh, did I? I think I covered that. Okay. So, future com. Will all vehicles get structural battery? I wanted to show. I have an image of structural battery. Did I save it? Did I lose it? integrated by I don't I think I lost it all right I don't know what I did with structural battery so that's out of luck so um, so this is a question the question I had was will all vehicles get the structural battery so right now the plan is that the Berlin Model Y will have the front casting the rear casting and the structural battery that's gonna be different than the Fremont Model Y I believe that the Shanghai Model Y is still going to be the Fremont version, but it's very possible that the Shanghai Model Y will adopt the same casting machines as the Berlin factory. And it's pretty clear that Model Y produced in Texas will follow the Berlin model as well. I suppose it's possible they're waiting to see how it works and make sure it works before they adopt it widespread, but they seem to believe it and it makes a lot of sense. I don't see why they wouldn't do this. So I think we're gonna see, definitely all the Model Ys are gonna to go to structural battery, which, you know, single single frame casting for the front, single casting for the rear, and structural battery in the middle. That seems to be the future. It only makes sense that they're gonna do that for Model 3. So, you know, the Model 3 that'll be built in Berlin will follow the same path. The Model 3 that'll be built in Austin, um, Shanghai will probably convert over at some point. Fremont will probably convert over at some point as they get better at doing this, as they figure out iteratively how to do this better and better. They probably won't do it right away. They'll wait until they've really nailed it and then they'll shift it. So, um, let's see. So then you've got Model S and X. There's a lot of talk about Project Palladium. Project Palladium is supposedly a redesign of the Model S and the Model X. I thought the, I don't think I have it handy, I thought the image of the Model S and the Model X looked newer than the ones that they're selling now, but um, whole Mars blog disagreed with me. He said, no, those are the current ones. Oh, I gotta get rid of this. I gotta keep up here. 
I stink at this. Let's see. We're, we're on structural battery still. I'm trying to work on this this thing here. Structural battery. So, um, it seems pretty clear to me that Model S and Model X will also at some point switch to this front casting, rear casting, structural battery layout, especially if there is a Project Palladium. Project Palladium will adopt that. <clears throat> that will lower the cost per vehicle. It will enable them to deliver the vehicle at lower cost. It will enable to deliver more range, all the other advantages we talked about. All of this is spectacular. So, um, Cybertruck would not use the same thing because it's not cast. It's folded steel. So we, I, we shouldn't see, I, it may be that the battery still takes a structural role in Cybertruck, but the front and rear castings will not happen with Cybertruck, so that's out. All right, what do we got next? We got charging speed and cycle life. So this is another big question a lot of people had that I don't know the answer to yet. How fast will these batteries charge? If we look at, I just put this up a minute ago. Um, if we look at the, the 4680 cell, they said it would have 5x the energy, which I don't think relates to charging speed, and it said 6x the power, and I think that does relate to charging speed. I think 6x power means it outputs six times the power of the 2170 cell. And I think it's not six times the volume of the 2170 cell. So I think that means it can discharge faster and I think it means it can charge faster. Also the tabless design, which I don't think I have a slide for the tabless design. The tabless design reduces heating, which is a big issue with charging. Because if you follow the tabless design, the path that the electrons follow in order to get in and out, to move from cathode to anode, <coughs> goes from 250 millimeters to 50 millimeters, if I have the numbers right. And that dramatically reduces cell heating, so you can charge faster without overheating. I don't know what effect that has on cycle life, which is another thing to talk about. And this applies not just to, if they go tabless on every cell format, if they go tabless on iron phosphate, if they go tabless on nickel manganese, then charging speed should increase on all the, on all the cells and um, discharge power should increase on all the cells. And um, cycle life is an interesting question. Now for those who don't know, lithium iron phosphate already has excellent cycle life. That is one of the reasons why it is really good for grid storage. It's got great cycle life, it's great, so it's got great cycle life and it's low cost. So it's fantastic, for, and then you don't care about mass, and you don't care about volume in grid storage. So I believe the number I heard from Shirley Mung in her interview with limiting, The Limiting Factor, I believe she said that lithium iron phosphate is now a 6,000 cycle life chemistry. 6,000 cycles times 300 mile range is a 1.8 million mile battery. The lithium iron, let me say that again, the lithium iron phosphate Model 3 and Model Y should have about 300 miles of range when they're out. You know, not immediately, that's a couple years down the road. They're gonna have 300 miles of range and they're gonna have a 6,000 cycle life battery. If it doesn't get longer with the tabless design, it's gonna be a 1.8 million mile battery. It's, it's gonna be amazing. Now we don't know about the high nickel content. We don't know about the nickel manganese uh, chemistries. What's their cycle life? And maybe that hasn't been adequately tested yet. I have a feeling they know and they didn't say, but if you've got a 500 mile range, you only need 2000 cycles to get a million miles. And if you're doing a Roadster or a Plaid Model S, then you're probably not that concerned about having a million mile battery because you're not putting it out there as a robo taxi. This is a high end vehicle that you're driving 10, 20,000 miles a year at most. Um, you know, if you're crazy, you're driving 25,000 miles a year and a 500,000 mile battery would last you 20 years. So I don't think it matters as much for those applications. Now for the semi, well, the semi is supposed to have a thousand mile range. So you only need a thousand cycles. Was it? Yeah, you only need a thousand cycles to get to the million mile battery on the semi. So I think the cycle life, they just didn't answer this question, it didn't come up. They didn't talk about, it's another thing I didn't include in the, in the, in the list of my notes here. They didn't talk about energy density in terms of uh, watt hours per kilogram or watt hours per liter. 
there's gravimetric energy density by mass and there's volumetric energy by volume. They didn't really talk about it. It sounded like the combination of the larger format cell, the high silicon, the silicon anode, the high nickel cathode, it sounds like it's gonna have significantly higher energy density. From previous tweets from Elon, he said in three to four years, they expect to get to 400 watt hours per kilogram manufactured, which would be the high nickel batteries. So my hunch, um, since they've said that cell energy density improves about 5% a year, and this is a step change. So they're gonna go from the 260 watt hours per kilogram or so they've got now with nickel cobalt aluminum. I am predicting that the new high nickel chemistry has 340 watt hours per kilogram. And then if you do 1.5%, uh, a 5% increase, 1.05 to the third or fourth power, you get close to 400 watt hours in three to four years. So, um, and you know, I don't know how much that matters to the average person, you know, what the energy density is. It matters when you get up to 400 because you start talking about electric jets when you get that level of energy density. But when, and it's, you know, keep in mind there's energy density at the cell level and there's energy density at the pack level and or the vehicle level because there really isn't even a pack anymore. Now it's, they went, they skipped over. Elon had talked in third row Tesla podcast about how they've been doing cell to module, module to pack, pack to vehicle, and they were going to go straight from cell to module to cell the pack and they're going to eliminate the modules well CATL a few months ago was there was an article about how they were going straight sell the chassis which is what this is this is sell the chassis they're actually skipping the pack as well they're going straight from module sell, they're going sell to chassis which saves a lot of weight um, makes it a better structural uh, more structural rigidity fantastic what's that sorry one second I got a message from somebody what Mike can hear you swallowing. Okay, well, sorry about that. My, uh, my, 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 assistant, my, my assistant is telling me that the mic can hear me swallowing. I can't help that. So I probably can't help it, but I can't help it now. So where were we? We're talking about charge speed and cycle life and energy density. So um, all of this together, you know, we're gonna see much longer. They kind of answered the range question. They said range is gonna go up 50 some percent. I think I have that. This was big. I'm gonna block my face for a second so you guys don't have to see my ugly mug. Here's my eyes, woo! So, um, yeah. So we got a 54% range increase. We've got 56% uh, cost per kilowatt hour reduction, which is huge from the, when, when you're looking at the, the two on, the, on my right, um, the cost per kilowatt hour and the investment per gigawatt hour reduction, these are massive savings that are gonna make Tesla much more profitable if you care about that. If you're just into the vehicle stuff, then the thing on the other side is cool with the range increase. So the range increase, it's 16% for cell design, it's 20% for anode material. I think both of those apply to the other chemistries. Cathode material, what? Oh, thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay, we're better. Sorry about that, I don't know how I did that. But I think you guys can all hear me now, right? So, I think I'm a little too loud now. So the, um, sorry, I'll say that again. So the range increase, I'm gonna make this a little smaller so I can. So the range increase, the cell design, um, applies to, I think that's the format, that's the 4680, that applies to all the chemistries. The anode material applies to all the chemistries. The cathode material, I think that only applies to the high nickel chemistry. Cell vehicle integration applies to all the chemistries. So all of these formats are gonna get 50, roughly 50% 50 range increase. So even the lithium iron phosphate is gonna see a 50% range increase, which is gonna put it to 300 miles. Um, so I think that's, that's monstrous, that's a huge detail. Um, so I think I covered cycle life, is it a million mile battery? I think I talked about energy density, so let's move on to the next doohickey. Uh, mining. So. I think I have a uh, I have a slide for it, but there was a slide where they showed where the lithium clays are, and they showed a cathode and lithium. Let me find that. 
uh, here we go. There's this slide here where they show ah, Well, I can't get it to, I don't know why that won't move, but all right. So there's this slide with the co-locate lithium conversion. Ah, what is going on? I can't get to it. Whatever. It shows te Tesla cathode and Tesla lithium in the center of the country and lithium clays in Nevada. That suggests to me, and it's only a guess, that the cathode and lithium factories, if the factory is the right word, that that's going to be in Austin. It, it's closer to Austin, you know, the lithium clays are showing in Nevada and the cathode and lithium thing is showing in the center of the country. It's not in Austin, but it's closer to Austin. And then you can see lithium and nickel in the Caribbean for some reason and up in Ontario. We know that Tesla already, Tesla already has operations in Ontario, um, Ontario, Canada. So I think there's a really good chance that we're going to see Tesla operations in Ontario, Canada. High bar, they bought high bar systems that was based in based there. But so we know they've acquired the rights to the lithium clays in Nevada. And that should supply enough lithium for the entire North American market. So they're good there. There's probably a ton of lithium in Australia. I think the lithium's everywhere. Maybe there's lithium in China, I don't know. Um, there's a lot of nickel in Australia, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did something like a Terra factory in Australia. Um, and so the question was, is Tesla gonna reach some long-term contracts with nickel miners or is Tesla gonna start doing its own nickel mining? It sounded like they're not gonna do their own nickel mining. It sounds like they've got mining partners who they've been talking to who said, yes, we'll increase nickel mining. Um, I think this is, this is why the chemistries are important. The um, having diversified chemistries because if they don't increase nickel production, you still have lithium iron phosphate. Another reason lithium iron phosphate is important is because if you make the low end vehicles with lithium iron phosphate, you're leaving more nickel for the high nickel applications. So, but it is interesting and it's an open question. Where's the nickel gonna come from? What, what, what mining contracts are they gonna be? And I don't think they've answered that question yet. So uh, we're gonna move on from that. Uh, I thought this was a great, somebody, oops, not that. What happened? Uh, maybe I missed it. Okay, well, we're talking about next Tesla event. We're talking about next Tesla event. I don't know what happened with my outline and I don't want to fix it now. We just had battery day. Previously, there was an autonomy day. And there's a really good question. What's the next day? Um, it seems like another battery day would be a long way off. And it seems like a manufacturing day. They kind of covered manufacturing in great detail um, at battery day, this whole new manufacturing strategy. <clears throat> so it seems like the next event would be a new autonomy day. <clears throat> um, and related to that, let's see. What's going on here? I don't know what's going on here. Um, so related to that, I screwed up my outline, sorry about that. So related to that, you know, what's happening with full self-driving? I think full self-driving is a really interesting issue and I wanna bring up a couple of tweets from Elon. There's this tweet, um, this is from August and Elon was asked about, he was talking about, um, he was talking, let me shrink this a little bit more. Oh, okay, that's better. So this is August 25th, and Elon was talking about chips for neural networks. The first tweet up at the top is about graphical processing units for neural networks. And Elon said they're doing something different. Um, lots of cores optimized for dot products. Well, he was going into detail about that. And then the second tweet, he talked about FSD is mostly integer eight and Dojo is de facto floating point 32, but it's actually floating point 16. And I have another tweet related to this in a minute. Let me show you the other tweet. Um, come on. 
There we go. For Dojo, we're betting on floating point 16, so it feels like floating point 32. For Inference, Integer 8 works great. Inter integer 8 Inference, that is for the chips that go in the cars, and Dojo is for the supercomputer that's gonna enhance the training and improve the software. Um, they work together, but float, so the Dojo is gonna be using floating point 16, and, and so, but Elon's talking about the chips. He's talking about Dojo and he's talking about the chips. And it, on Autonomy Day, if you go back to our Tesla Autonomy Day, they said that there's an FSD4 chip coming. That was, I don't think it was two years ago, but it was a while ago, and they had said they'd been working on it for two years. So I'm gonna advance a theory here, and I'm probably gonna do a full video on it later. I think FSD4 is coming soon. I think FSD4 chip is coming in 2021. There's a lot of people who have the 2.5, FSD 2.5 chips in their cars, and they're wondering when their FSD3 chip is coming, and there's been some slow rollout of FSD3 chips to people. I think Tesla decided to heck with it. We're gonna hold on, we'll put the FSD3 chips in the new vehicles for now, but we're gonna be rolling out FSD4 soon and that's when the next event will be. When they have the FSD4 chip, which is gonna be at least triple the performance, when they have the, the FSD4 chip come out, it's gonna be at least triple the performance and probably lower energy consumption than the FSD3 chip. And that will be a basis for a new autonomy date. It'll be a combination of the FSD chipset and the foundational rewrite for autonomy, because Elon sort of hinted at it, he's talked about it, he's got, you know, uh, my theory is that he has the FSD, he, he has said he has the bleeding edge alpha version of the foundational rewrite of, of autopilot software in his car that he drives on a daily basis. My theory is he also has the FSD4 chip in his car right now. And he has the advanced battery pack. He has the, the high nickel batteries in his car. He is driving a plaid. Elon is the only person, one of the few people in the world driving, maybe, uh, maybe uh, Franz is driving one and maybe uh, Drew gets to drive one. They're driving plaid Model S's with 500 miles of range, <clears throat> full autonomy. They got it all. Um, they got the whole. They got the whole nine yards with the FSD four chip and everything. I think there's there are several Tesla employees who are driving around in these things now, um, and it's 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 going. So that's coming soon. So let's see. Okay. So I think. No 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 no. Profit. <laughs> This is a topic of, of uh, the video I just made, and I've made videos in the past. So 2022, Tesla makes 100 gigawatt hours of high nickel batteries, which is enough for 2 million Model 3s and Ys, which would be 4X the production and 20 the production and delivery in 2020 not counting all the other vehicles they're going to produce not counting all the grid storage increase in production tesla is going to grow massively in the next two years the growth is going to be stunning we're, we're about to hit that x we're about to see where the exponential curve takes off um i i either they're not going to deliver on what they talked about or that you know i it didn't seem like you know, and this is one of the things I just want to say this. People talk about Elon time. People talk about Elon getting ahead of himself. <laughs> it's one thing when Elon says something and nobody else is saying it. Drew Baglino was right there with him. Drew is saying it's going to happen. You know, Elon can talk about Starship point to point. Everybody goes, oh, that's just Elon talking. But Gwyn Shotwell said they're going to do it at SpaceX. So when the Tesla team is talking the same talk as Elon, it's different than Elon time. So I genuinely believe we are going to see 100 gigawatt hours of the new cells produced in 2022. We're going to see well over 2 million vehicles produced by and delivered by Tesla in 2022. And that's just the beginning. So what does that do to market cap? What does that do to profit? What does it do to... Now, it doesn't necessarily mean a lot of profit because Tesla is investing heavily in building all this new stuff. So the R&D spending and the, the capital spending, even though the capital spending is lower per gigawatt hour, when you add it up over the 10 years or 20 years that these factories are gonna be producing batteries, 
in the short run, we're gonna see really, really high expenses for building out this capability. So the profit numbers won't be that high in 2021 and 2022, but the revenue numbers are gonna skyrocket. The volume of vehicles delivered and produced is gonna skyrocket, and you don't have to look that far down the road to say, well, wait a minute, they're not gonna have the same capital expense the next year. They not, maybe they amortize the expense over five years, but it's good for 10, you know, it's really gonna last 10 years. So I think we're going to see a massive, massive reduction in a massive increase in revenue. And I don't see how that doesn't spike the share price. You know, once people get, okay, we're going 100, and you know, we're going 100 gigawatt hours in 2022, we're aiming for three terawatt hours in 2030. How many vehicles is three terawatt hours? I didn't even do that math. I mean, it, it's 30 times 100, you know, three, three terawatt hours is 30 times 100. So 30 times 2 million, <laughs> I think that's 60 million cars. I mean, you know, try to wrap your head around that. Elon says we're going to deliver 20 million vehicles in 2030. He's sandbagging. He is sandbagging. They're going to be building the volume of vehicles that Tesla is going to like own the entire world's car market, and especially when they go to robo taxi. Um, this is insane. This, like, you know, do the do the math yourself. Three terawatt hours. If each vehicle has a hundred gigawatt hour pack. Okay, a hundred kilowatt hour pack, then 10 vehicles in a megawatt hour, 10,000 vehicles in a gigawatt hour, 10 million vehicles in a terawatt hour, 30 million vehicles produced in 2030. 30 million. So if people start to see it, if investors see, wait a minute, they, okay, they produced over a million vehicles in 2021, they're going to produce 2 million vehicles in 2022. And, and that doesn't even include the other batteries. That doesn't include the iron phosphate batteries. That doesn't include the nickel manganese batteries. That's just the nickel, high nickel batteries that Tesla's gonna make themselves, three terawatt hours. It's insane. It is insane how much this is gonna do. I've been saying Tesla's gonna be $20,000 a share in 2030, and I think that's really low. Um, and people are like, oh, well that would mean they'd have a $20 trillion market cap. That would be bigger than US GDP. Okay, well, GDP isn't a measure of the wealth of the United States. It's a measure of the revenue of the United States. It's the, you know, there are two different things. The wealth of the United States is far greater than 20 trillion. I don't know what the number is, but it's huge. It's gonna be a lot bigger when Tesla's worth $20 trillion. <laughs> so, um, I think that was everything I wanted to talk about in my list. So now we're gonna turn to the chat. I am gonna look in the chat and I, I would appreciate uh, questions. I'm gonna put my glasses on. My helper may come up. Wait, wait, I gotta go. I gotta go over here and get rid of this. Okay, we're on audience questions. I really gotta work on that. I'm not a weatherman. Audience questions. Let's see what people are saying. Those batteries won't only be for cars though, Wendell says. I disagree with you, Wendell. Um, the batteries will only be for cars um, because grid storage is going, and I don't know what else you're thinking of, Wendell, but grid storage is going to use iron phosphate batteries, which are cheaper. So anybody who's saying, there's a bunch of people saying that uh, these cells are gonna be used for power pack, et cetera. I don't think so. I think power pack and power wall are gonna use iron phosphate, you know, why not? Let's see, powertrain day next. It makes sense if Tesla tries to find a way to reduce. Do you have any good questions? Oh, I, look, I got a whole bunch of questions here. Awesome. 21st, because that one's 21st. Paid, I think. Okay, I wasn't even paying attention to that. So Aaron Schweiler, thank you very much for your contribution. Do you think the improved manufacturing efficiency and material changes make the $25,000 model have a lower CO2 impact than a comparable ICE car even before you start driving it? Um, I would say the answer to that is yes. I'm, I, you're, you're going beyond my range of expertise, Aaron, but I would say yes. I think the, the manufacturing efficiencies are huge. I think the, I, I don't see any questions. And not just, to me, it's not just about CO2 impact. It's about all kinds of pollution. It's about all kinds of impact. So I'm gonna go, so that, that was your, I hope that answered your question. Thank you for asking. Alvin Singh, what's the plan to mitigate the Osborne effect? Great question. I said this in, my, in a recent video, the Osborne effect does not apply to Tesla. Okay, it may apply in the future, but it doesn't apply. Think about this. Does the Osborne effect keep you from buying a cell phone when you need a cell phone? 
No. When you need a cell phone, you buy a cell phone. You know next year there's going to be a better iPhone. You know, you, you buy a laptop, you know next year there's going to be a better laptop, but you buy one. If, if you need a car, you need a car. I think the Osborne effect from Tesla actually has more impact on ICE vehicles than it has on Tesla vehicles. Look, you know, I bought, I did not buy a Model 3 when the Model 3 just first came out because I needed a vehicle and the only Model 3 available was the high-end one. It was going to cost me like $60,000 or something and I bought a Volkswagen Passat for $18,000. But when you need a vehicle, you need a vehicle. You're not going to say, you know what, I need a vehicle but I'm going to wait two years till the next vehicle comes out. Um, no, I don't think there'll be a problem finding workers in, in Germany. I think there's a lot of workers in, in, in Eastern Europe. Um, so I don't think the Osborne effect applies. It applies to some people. It applies to the people who are thinking, gee, maybe I'll buy a new car, which is kind of me. I, I'm a, like, I probably would have a Model Y right now, but I'm waiting for Cybertruck. Cybertruck stopped me from buying a Model Y. So, you know, it applies to some, but when, when your lease is up, you need a new car. You know, and I think that's more than half the market. And the demand for good vehicles like Tesla's, especially as they're going to improve as we're gonna see them improve and the cost is gonna drop, the demand for vehicles like Tesla is essentially unlimited compared to how much they can produce. The only thing holding Tesla back is the ability to produce in volume. There's essentially infinite, not infinite demand, but de demand is always gonna be more than supply for the next five to 10 years, if not longer. I mean, maybe if they're producing my dream and they're producing 30 million vehicles in 2030, Maybe that's when they catch up to demand, maybe. I don't think so. Sue, do I think Tesla will eventually license their battery technology to other companies? Yes. I think they're going to license a lot of their battery technology to companies that are supplying them and they will probably encourage them to sell to others with the iron phosphate, with the nickel manganese. I'm not sure if they're gonna license the high nickel content, but maybe. Is the cycle life of TM3 batteries in China really 6K? I think you mean lithium iron phosphate batteries. Yes, I believe lithium. Shirley Mung said lithium iron phosphate has a 6,000 cycle life. So yes, I believe so. Um, will the Model Y produced at Giga Berlin have lithium iron phosphate batteries in Tesla's new 4680 format? Great question. I think the answer to that is yes. I think I talked about that. Is This is uh, Ismail Yusuf. Is the lithium extraction process using salt possible? Sounds too simplistic. That's over my head. If Drew, This is one of the things. When Elon says something, you go, okay, Elon's being fanciful. When Drew Baglino says it, too. When the team is saying it, when there's a bunch of people behind him and they're all saying it, then yeah, it's true. They're, they, you, you know they've already tried it. They've already done it. They, they don't just say, we think we can do this. They've already done it. They're already driving the 4680 cells in cars. They didn't just introduce and say, we're going to do this. They're doing it. They've already, they, there's no way they would have said that if they hadn't tested it. Now, can they scale it up? How challenging is that? I don't know. It doesn't sound very challenging. Sometimes, you know, you said sounds too simplistic. Sometimes simple is the answer. Simple is hard. I think they said simple is hard, but they'll do it. EV or not to EV, that is my question for my next ride. Do you ever worry about antitrust issues when Tesla become the most valuable company in the world? Yes. Yes, I worry about antitrust issues. Tesla may need to split up their car business from its energy business. Yes, I think all those things can happen. My biggest fear as a shareholder for Tesla's success and as a citizen of the world hoping for cleaner air, less pollution, better quality of life for everyone, my biggest fear is that politicians will ruin it. That politicians in the United States, that politicians in other countries will ruin it. This is one of the reasons why Tesla having factories on multiple continents and multiple countries matters. And by the way, I'm sorry, I'm gonna slip something in here. There was a moment when Elon said, it's important to at least have factories on, on, on the same continent so you can serve China, he was talking about Asia at that time, and multiple other countries, and many other countries. Now it wasn't clear whether he was saying that the gigafactory in China would serve many other countries, or whether there would be factories in many other countries in Asia. That was really fun. Um, some people, most people think he meant that the China factory would serve many other countries. I think it means there's going to be factories in many other countries. Um, so antitrust issues are huge. Would they have to split their car business from the energy business? That's not really an antitrust issue, but the antitrust issue is if they have a monopoly on the car market or if they have a monopoly on the robo taxi market. I suppose that depends on who gets in office. Um, Here's what I will say. My political opinion is that the biggest monopoly is government. 
I think Elon said that. The biggest monopoly is government. Tesla is driving down the cost of transportation. They're improving the quality of life. They're minimizing pollution. Elon Musk and his team at Tesla and other com companies are doing more to make our lives better than all the politicians in the world combined. So if you've got a choice between politicians and Elon Musk and the Tesla team and the Boring Company team and the Neuralink team, I'm going with Elon's people over those hacks. So... Um, let me just address this. Politically, India might not allow Tesla unless there's a factory there. India politics is a big can of worms. Totally agree. India has, um, that's Jim Whitehead. I totally agree that India is a challenge regulatory wise. I don't, I, I'm sure that Elon would like to find a way in. I know that the Indian, his name's Narendra Modi. I know he's visited Tesla headquarters. Look, if you live in India, I think the air isn't clean. I think there's a, the, the grid isn't reliable. There's a huge argument for having Tesla come in and make things better. And I'm sure, and there's tons of engineers too. You know, Elon talks about a shortage of engineers. Talk about a country that has loads of engineers ready to work. Who speak English? I mean, it's spectacular. You know, for us Americans, you know, it's an American company. They, it would be fantastic if India would, if they could work something out with India, um, dramatically improve the lives of the people of India. My cyber van concept would dramatically improve mass transit for India, clean the air, so many benefits, but anybody who follows India knows the government's a mess, so I don't know. Okay, let's see. Uh, which European OEM do you think will go bankrupt? I think every car manufacturer will go bankrupt. Every ICE car manufacturer will go bankrupt. All of them. Honda, maybe maybe Honda survives. I mean, I think Volkswagen has like $200 billion in debt. I mean, you know, the question isn't whether they'll go bankrupt. The question is what will, re what will survive after they go bankrupt. I think Tesla's going to destroy every car, every car company in the world. Um, except for the, the startups, there's going to be some Chinese EV startups that are going to do well. I think there may be some other startups. Maybe Rivian can make it. Um, maybe I'm wrong about Lucid and Lucid will make it. I mean, we can hope that all these companies do well. Um, yes, Cura Cars. I saw that story about India offering an incentive for locally produced batteries. Um, it was a small number starting and you just never know whether the Indian or any, whether the Indian government or any government is going to deliver on promises like that. Question, without converting to the new 4680 cells, how can Tesla get the price down? I believe they're converting, so my opinion is they are gonna convert everything to the 4680 cell. I see no reason not to, but there's a lot of other improvements that don't depend on the 4680 cell, like the structural battery. Um, so, and I, I know that uh, Panasonic has said they're gonna get up to 300 watt hours per kilogram on the nickel cobalt aluminum cell lines by 2022. So we're already seeing improvements there anyway. And as you, and you scale up production, you get economies of scale with that too. Johan, isn't the combination of manufacturing advancements and iron-based chemistry even more of a game changer for grid storage than it is for the auto market and more reliably so? I don't think, I don't think so. I mean, it's a game changer. The iron-based chemistry was already there. So I don't think that's a change. I think it's a question of, you know, I, I think that might be over my head. I think that the auto market is so huge because we're, it's when autos cross a threshold that they get that much better than ICE cars that all of a sudden they just, demand goes infinite and they can, the, the, the game, whole game is catching up, is catch, getting the supply to catch up to demand. Um, I don't think much of Arkhamoto, it's just, I just don't think it's significant. I think it's too expensive for what it is and then Elon doesn't like them because they're not safe. Um, so let's see. Um, so I, I think that some of the manufacturing invest, I do, do think that matters for grid storage. I think things like Megapack and Powerpack become that much more compelling. I think Powerwall becomes that much less expensive and it becomes easier to persuade consumers to put in a home solar slash Powerwall system. So yeah, I, at least I agree the 54% range might be lowball. I agree with that. Um, so I, I think it matters. I don't, I don't know enough about grid storage in the energy market to comment on that. I, I should learn more about that. Aren't the battery production facilities going to be integrated? This is Aaron Bounds. Aren't the battery production facilities going to be integrated into the car production facilities? I think I have that slide. Yes, the answer to that is yes. I think I have that on a slide. Uh, integrated battery battery factory. So Aaron Bounds, this is answering your question. 
smaller, simpler, smaller integrated battery and battery factory of the future. You got a 55% reduction in investment, bigger gigawatt, gigawatt hour, and 35% reduction in floor space. So yes, battery production will be integrated into the factory. Absolutely, great question, and I, I'm glad I could answer that. How about Brazil, South America? Great question, Michael Lewis. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, I think South America is huge for this. I think Brazil is very, very likely. I think the only challenge in Latin America, which is the same challenge in Africa, and to some extent the same challenge in India, is politics. Um, there's a lot of chaos in Latin America. I, I don't, I'm not claiming I understand it. Yo, I, yo hablo un poquito de español. I speak Spanish. I have friends from Brazil. Um, I'm aware that there are a lot of issues, but I think Brazil still has a lot of thriving industries. I think they make airplanes. I forget that. I'm, I'm, I can't remember the name of the company. There's a, there's a Brazilian company that makes airplanes that I, the name's on the tip of my tongue. Um, Embarcadere, Brasilier, I forget the name of the company. But um, so Brazil, very promising. Um, Mexico, uh, I, I think I read that there's a lot of nickel reserves in Guatemala, which is right near the Mexican border. I think Guatemala is a mess politically, but you know, if you could get the nickel from Guatemala and, and man, you do something in, in Mexico, maybe. I think Venezuela, Venezuela is a mess, but I think they have a lot of nickel. Um, Tiger Roll, don't forget the 1 million pre-ordered Cybertrucks. Elon said 600,000. Cybertruck is huge. I, I think Cybertruck is just part of the 2 million vehicles I mentioned, <clears throat> or more. CM, when will they make the SMI? I don't know what the SMI is. Jim Whitehead, did we get an idea of the price cut using iron? Yes, I did, we, I did get that. Um, I'm gonna do a video on that, but Katha, no, let's see. This is it, I think. So, uh, Jim Whitehead, this is for you. Um, the total reduction was 56% uh, dollars per kilowatt hour reduction. 14% was the battery cell format, so that applies to the iron phosphate. 18% was, I think 5% five percent was the was the silicon, which uh, Drew said applied to iron phosphate. 7% applies to the structural battery. I believe the, the thing behind Elon is the cathode. And now I forget what the 18% is. I forget what that 18% is. I can't see it. Um, well, one's cathode, one's anode, one's... I don't think I have that slide. I can't remember what that is. So um, I think at least half, uh, and maybe it was 30% of the uh, gym, I think at least half and maybe more of the price cut. I don't think, I mean, iron phosphate's already cheap. But I do think it's going to be, you know, 60% of current cost. And then you got economies of scale and tabless. Yeah, I think that's going to drop at least 20, 30%, maybe 40%. Justin, will Musk's stock compensation impact the bottom line of upcoming earnings, making it eligible for S&P inclusion? No, I don't see that happening. I think Musk's stock compensation, it's probably already, it's, first of all, it's options compensation. I don't, I don't think that has a big enough impact to matter. Stripped cover hit. Can you address the fact that Cybertruck is high nickel, but prices were super low? Exactly. I think I did address this. Um, I believe that Cybertruck will have op will have different battery packs depending on circumstances. I believe that uh, the low end Cybertrucks will use iron phosphate batteries or nickel manganese, and the high end Cybertruck, the tri motor, will use the. I don't know why they did that slide that way. Um, so I think I answered that question. Uh, so yeah, and so I, the short answer: I don't think Cybertruck will only be high nickel. I'm just, the the argument for why Cybertruck would be high nickel is you're trying to support the 3,500 pound payload. Um, and if you increase the weight of the vehicle, you, you push the, oh, the gross vehicle weight rating too high and maybe it can't handle the 3,500-pound uh, payload. I think it was 3,500 pound payload. So I suppose there could be an argument that they can't do the 35. But I think you just give the consumer the choice. If you take the iron phosphate battery pack, then you have a 2,500-pound uh, payload, but you, the vehicle costs less. I, I'm not sure how they're going to do that. Let's see. Um, Tesla stock prediction 2025. Five thousand dollars a share? I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't know. It's I, I didn't. I'll probably do a video where I go through that again. I think I need to redo that video. How is Tesla Drew, Druba? How is Tesla going to manage heating issue without any tab on it? The the tabless design reduces heating. 
the tabless design reduces heating. It, dramatic, it basically wipes out the heating problem. There is no heating problem with the tabless design. They did a graphic on that where they showed how much it drops. It's spectacular. Stripped coverless. Says, Will the non-Tesla manufactured be the same big size? I think so. I think I addressed that earlier in the video. Arnoud, will the new anode only consist of silicon or silicon with graphite? So I thought they were clear. I was surprised by this. I thought they were clear that the new anode, I think I have this. So let me, let me talk about silicon for a second. So, no, this is not the one. I'm going to do the other one first. Okay, so here's, this is a slide about silicon for those who didn't get it. So the deal is, um, on the side far from my face, you see silicon. What happens with silicon is as you load it up with lithium ions, it expands to four times its size. And if you don't handle that well, the silicon fractures. And then if you look at the middle slide, your, your we'll call it a bookshelf, the stable platform that holds lithium ions falls apart if you don't manage the, the volume expansion well. This is the, the reason why silicon hasn't been used. And what people have talked about is combining silicon with graphite. Um, and by adding a little bit of silicon, you increase the amount that the graphite silicon mix can hold compared to graphite alone. Um, and you see the, the side of the slide closest to me, you see this thick SEI layer. That's the layer between the electrolyte and the cathode, I believe, or the electrolyte and the anode, I guess, in this circumstance, that if you have a thick SEI layer, um, Solid electrolyte, I forget what that's called. Um, and something, something electrolyte interface layer that, that, that appears that that is part of what makes it better. And, um, oh, come on. Why can't, this is too hard. There we go. So they're taking raw metallurgical silicon and I gotta work on my skills here, folks. They're taking raw metallurgical silicon and they're stabilizing the surface through elastic ion conducting polymer coatings. I believe what they're doing is they're taking fairly small particles of silicon, stabilizing them with a coating and that means that the expansion does not overexpand and ruin the silicon. And then they put that in a robust network, the part that's closest to me, with a highly elastic binder and electrode design. And that, again, mitigates the volume expansion and makes it work. So, what was the question about silicon? Um, will the new anode consist only consist of silicon? So the advantage of silicon, just so people missed it, is silicon holds nine times as many lithium ions as graphite. Or it, it's much more effective. It allows much greater energy density and silicon is cheap. Graphite is also cheap. So I believe the path that they're going to is all silicon. I don't think there's any reason to use graphite. They weren't clear about it, but that's how I heard it. It sounded like it's just pure silicon, which is if you watch the limiting factor interview with Shirley Mung, that's mind blowing. That's mind blowing. Cause Shirley Mung was like, well, maybe they'll do 20% silicon mixed with graphite. And I saw Shirley Mung on Twitter saying, wow, that was amazing. So she buys it. And Shirley Mung is a battery chemistry expert. What's your opinion of Neostock? I don't have an opinion on Neostock. I don't really have opinions on most other stocks. How do you service an EV with integrated battery if it's not a million mile battery? Well, how do you service a, a, a car with a 500,000 mile life? You don't, you throw it out. Um, I don't, I don't, I think that you don't have to service the batteries. The battery pack is gonna be basically indestructible. It's gonna last as long. First of all, I think it's going to be a million mile battery or close enough to it that it doesn't matter. And um, I think, you know, look, how do you service your iPhone when the battery goes dead? You buy a new iPhone. You, you're going to get up, if you get 800,000 miles out of your vehicle and then you can't fix the battery, you get a new vehicle. You got, you got enough use out of it. I don't think that's a concern. All right. John Harcomb, which nickel companies? I don't know the answer to that. I don't think they've answered that question yet. 
Scott from Maryland, threat of Tesla battery makes CATL Panasonic lower their prices. I don't think it's a threat. I think it's that Tesla will make long-term contracts with them to increase their volume of production and that will allow them economies of scale. Tesla's probably gonna license them the technologies, improvements that they've got and that will help them lower their prices. How about China using those chips on missiles? I. Don't, I don't believe that the chips are designed to be used on missiles. I don't think missiles use neural, neural network design. I think that's completely irrelevant. I don't wanna say this now because I get this a lot. Oh, we shouldn't do business with China because China this. Look, I'm an American. I've been American my whole life. I was born here. I lived in Japan for a year. I traveled in Europe a little bit, been to South Korea, but I'm an American. I am, I am a passionate believer in the American experiment as, as bad as it's going right now. And I'm not being partisan about that. It's bad on both sides. Um, the greatest threat, China is not a threat to the United States, to the American people. Russia is not a threat to the American people. There is no external threat to the American people. The greatest threat to the American people for over 200 years has been Washington, D.C. The greatest threat to the American people, the greatest threat to our way of life, the greatest threat to Tesla, the greatest threat to improving our environment and making improving our way of life is Washington, D.C. Republicans and Democrats and other um, bureaucrats and, and special interests, that's the greatest threat to America, not China. China is not a threat. China is a, potent, is a great potential partner. China has dramatically improved. Maybe whatever you think about the Chinese government, they have dramatically improved the lives of the Chinese people. The vast majority, and yes, I know there's some people who are oppressed. I'm not saying that there's no human rights issues in China, but they've dragged hundreds of millions, if not a billion people out of horrible grinding poverty um, and, and we can help them improve and they can help us improve and we can work together with India and improve and we can work together with Russia and improve. We can make this world a much better place if we stop worrying about enemies outside our countries and start working with people in other countries. When, let's see, what kind of battery pack for 520 plus miles? Oh, good good question, XRP stacker, what's the battery pack for five? I think it's 500, I agree with you, I think it's 150 kilowatt hour pack. Elon had talked in the past about a 200 kilowatt hour pack, I think it's 150 kilowatt hour pack. I don't think they need to go to 200 kilowatt hours. I think that um, when you add everything together, all the improvements, I think 150 kilowatt hours is enough. It could be 180. Northstead, when is the next stock price jump? I don't make short-term stock price predictions. I'm a long-term buy and hold investor. I, I, I sit and watch as people worry about the daily share price, like who cares? I'm not selling for 10 years. Why do I care? Question from Jayco, do you worry about Amazon, Apple, Google, et cetera, competition? No, I do not worry about competition. The reason, the primary reason I don't worry about competition is the goal is to replace roughly 2 billion internal combustion engine vehicles. And even with RoboTaxi making each vehicle replace five vehicles, if Tesla produces 40 million vehicles, that only replaces 200 million out of the 2 billion we gotta replace. There's lots of room for other companies to come in and produce other EVs that replace ICE vehicles. The competition is not between this ICE vehicle manufacturer and that ICE vehicle manufacturer. There is no EV market. One of the things you will see the Wall Streeters say is they will talk about, well, the EV market isn't growing fast enough. There is no EV market, there's a vehicle market. And almost everyone who buys a Tesla, their last vehicle was an ICE vehicle, an internal combustion engine vehicle. Almost everyone who owns a Tesla today recently owned an internal, and may still own an internal combustion engine vehicle. This is not a competition between EV manufacturers. This is a race where everybody wins. The more EV manufacturers, the better, the quicker we replace the fleet of ICE vehicles, the quicker we clean our air, the quicker we make our lives better, because it's not just about, I think it's big on pollution, but the quicker we make our lives better, period. So um, I think that, app, I don't think Amazon, I think they're doing something with Rivian, there'd be some production there. I think the primary thing they're gonna make is a, a delivery van, which Tesla isn't planning on making, so great, make them. Fantastic, go ahead. I, I, by the way, I'm an, I'm an Amazon and Google shareholder too, and through mutual funds, I own Apple. So I'm, a, I'm an investor in all these companies. My biggest investment is Tesla, my second and this biggest investment is Amazon. Um, Google might be third. Um, I haven't I don't haven't seen any indication of Google getting into vehicles. Uh, they're certainly trying to do self-driving. I think they're way behind. Let's address this. I think I said this before, but let's address this. There's the vehicle issue where Tesla has set forward a path that I don't see anybody anywhere near close to producing the volume of EVs that Tesla's planning on producing. 
with the performance, with all the benefits, they're, they're so far ahead, it's ridiculous. I hope other people come along. I think Volkswagen had a reveal of their ID4 and their ID3, and I think they're making progress. The great, the best thing they can do is target spaces that Tesla isn't making, because then they can make vehicles that don't have to compete with Teslas, and they just compete with ICE vehicles, and they replace ICE vehicles, and that's great. If you try to make a Tesla killer, <clears throat> and your vehicle isn't better than the Tesla you're trying to kill, then you're not gonna sell very many. Although I believe the Taycan is the number one Porsche sales item. But you know, it's priced so much higher than the Tesla Model S that it's not really competing with the Tesla Model S. How many people spending $100,000 on a car were thinking about spending $180,000 on a car? So, um, I do not worry about competition at all. I think that more I, more EV manufacturers is better. More is better. Let's let's replace the the ICE fleet. We have 25 in 25 years we can replace the entire ICE fleet if more EV manufacturers come along. Our air will be so much cleaner. People in India will be able to see the Himalayas. People in Los Angeles will have better views of their mountains. We'll all breathe cleaner. We'll eliminate all kinds of respiratory diseases. We'll save millions, maybe billions of lives. Come on, bring it on. Okay, so I finished all the questions that were brought to me by my assistant. We're about an hour and a half in. Let me, I'm gonna try to catch questions on the way. The silicon graphic is already close to solid state. I don't think it's the same as solid state, no. I don't think the silicon is solid state. I think those are two different things. Solid state, I think, means the electrolyte is solid. I could be wrong about that, but I believe ID4 sold out US production in 24 hours. Yeah, well, that's the question is can they scale up? I think ID4 looks, you know, it's funny, people were picking on the ID4 because it's got low, low acceleration. I don't care about low acceleration. It looked like a good car to me. Most recent demos from mobile. Okay, let's talk about um, RoboTaxi. I was going to talk about this a second ago. Self driving cars. I have yet to meet anyone who thinks that any chipset out there is close to Tesla's version 3 FSD chip. Tesla's version 3 FSD chip is probably 10 times better than any other FSD chip out there. If somebody disagrees with these, may mention the comments, somebody mentioned Mobileye. There are no self-driving chipsets that are close to the FSD 3 chipset. And FSD 4 is probably coming next year. And FSD 4 is gonna be three, four times better than the FSD 3 chipset. So, and, you got the software side that Tesla has their foundational rewrite coming out. Tesla has billions of miles of data to look for those edge cases and corner cases. Tesla is f at least five years ahead of everyone else on self-driving cars, at least five years ahead. And it's gonna be stunning. Lithium clay saline mining, lots of doubters in the mine. There's yeah, I love this. Rob Markovich says there's lots of doubters in the mining industry about lithium clay saline mining. Yeah, there were lots of doubters in the space industry when Tesla said they were going to land orbital rocket boosters. So let's be clear about this. This is one of those things I love. When Never tell Elon Musk he can't do something. Never tell Elon Musk he can't do something. December 21, 2015, SpaceX launched a rocket into space. An orbital booster going five, ten thousand miles an hour, 80 kilometers up or something like that, 70, 60, 70, 80 kilometers up. The thing turned around, came back, and landed at Canaveral. Almost five years ago, no one else has even tried. Their SpaceX is easily five years ahead of everyone else. Tesla is eight years ahead of everyone else. Okay, let's sorry, let me go to the question. I'm sorry, I got off on a ramp there. Matthew asks, do you think there's going to be a Model SX refresh redesign soon? Soon is the tough question. I think that all vehicles will go to this improved manufacturing technology. Hold on a second. Somebody said something about Mobileye that maybe I missed. Mobileye is actually very, very good and does things that FSD doesn't currently. So S. Linky, um, would you please email me, wredlick at gmail.com. I think it's in the description of this video. Please email me a link, because I have read about Mobileye before and I know they're doing good things, but I don't think they're remotely close to Tesla. So if you think you've got some source that says that Mobileye is close to Tesla and does things that FSD doesn't do currently, send me a link to that article I want to read it or a link to that video. I don't believe that they're anywhere near close. I don't think they have the miles and I don't think they have the chip technology. I know they're doing something. They might be number two or number three in the space, but they're not close to Tesla. SpaceX flew a grain silo and landed it, yes. Physics says the clay mining is valid. It's not much different. I'm telling you, they wouldn't have said that if they weren't doing it. Eric Williams, where did you live in Albany, New York? I'm in Boston Lake. I lived in Gilderland, New York. I grew up in Gilderland, New York, and I was on the Gilderland town board. Boston Lake's a beautiful place. 
I'm, I'm a traffic lawyer. I went to all the traffic courts all around Saratoga County and, else, and Warren County, etc. Elon in the tweet said, battery days, since they have the bats and cars in the road, they can manufacture. It's only a yield problem. Yes, it's a yield problem right now. Absolutely. Need to build battery factories to support those EVs. Yes, they're going to be building them. I think they're building them in the gigafactories. Mobilize only. It's not about level two versus level four. It's Mark Plot says mobilize only level two. Tesla's level four. It's not just about... Um, it's not just about level two and level four. It's how fast are their chips? What what instruction sets do the chips have? Are they integer eight? Are they floating point? Um, what's their processing speed? What are they capable of? I don't think their chips are anywhere near what Tesla's chips are. For FSD Robo Taxi, how will the car cope with the cameras being blocked by snow or mud? That's a great question. I've heard people ask that question before. I think Elon said they have a solution for it, but I don't know what the solution is. Maybe lasers? Believe it or not, I think he said lasers at one point. I don't know if he was kidding. Do you think Tesla's competitors stealing Tesla IP will get away with it? And if yes, will that reduce Tesla's revenue? And they're not stealing Tesla's IP, intellectual property. Tesla is, has, open, has said their patents are open. Anyone can use them. It's not the patents. Tesla wants people to copy their methods and do it because they, they it, but they're, it's the engineering, it's the iterative engineering. There's so much that goes into it. I, I'm not worried about that at all. I, I think Chinese will copy some of this and God bless them. We need more EVs. Um, I don't think Mobileye's close, no. What about the Las Vegas boring company minivans? When do you see them coming? I think that, um, I wish Elon would talk about that. Maybe that'll be at the next event. Um, the when will Tesla come out with a van? I think they should. I think that the Cybertruck platform could be great for it, but this new manufacturing method might be great for it too. Um, so we'll see. Um, Great question here from David Holton. As a traffic lawyer, what do you think about FSD accident liability driver versus vehicle manufacturer? If the vehicle's in self-driving mode, the, vehicle, the, the manufacturer is responsible, period. Um, and and um, period. And I think that we're going to see, accidents are gonna plummet. I'm a, I'm a traffic lawyer, uh, criminal defense lawyer, personal injury lawyer, drunk driving defense lawyer. Um, I don't do very much of that anymore. This. This thing right here is my the certification of being admitted to the Southern District of Florida. This is my this is a, a, a personal injury case where I got a three point eight five million dollar verdict. Um, I believe that the personal injury industry and the insurance industry and the drunk and the criminal defense industry are all going to be wiped out. I, I made a video called Ten Industries That uh, Tesla Will Destroy." It's one of my biggest videos in terms of views. Um, I'm probably going to remake that in some way, but. Uh, the 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 accidents are gone. The insurance people talk about Tesla insurance. What about Tesla insurance? Tesla insurance will be important in the short term, but once Robo Taxi goes live, then insurance isn't going to matter because there won't be accidents. And every accident will be on camera. And if the accident's caused by a, a human driver, then the human driver's insurance is responsible, not the Robo Taxi. And all the accidents will be caused by human drivers because human drivers suck. Will Tesla's battery or Gigatruck production, Cybertruck start at the same time in Giga Texas, which will be the greater challenge to ramp up? I think Cybertruck production is gonna be a bigger challenge to ramp up, I think, because they haven't done that before. They've already started making the batteries. Why aren't Tesla leases super cheap? The residual value should be increasing. Great question, I don't know the answer to that. I think because they can charge it and people will pay it. Um, no, I think they've opened all their patents, Crazy Icelander. I don't think it's just the 2012 Model S patents that are open. I could be wrong. When is Tesla insurance coming to 50 states? I don't think it matters that much. I think it's coming soon to a lot of places. Jim, yeah, I think I should, re maybe I should remake that. I think, I think I could probably do a lot. It's funny, I watched it recently. I was like, wow, that was terrible. I could do a much better job of that, so maybe I will. Any news about FSD update? Well, Elon talked about the autopilot software update, but not the FSD. I think that's, that's the next event. No more ambulance chasers. You know, it's funny. I'm a, I'm a personal injury lawyer. When I was in Albany, New York, I felt like it was a really good community of lawyers. Um, there were some less ethical people, but generally it was about, the juries didn't give a lot of money away to people who weren't really hurt. And it was generally like somebody had to be really hurt to get something significant. There wasn't a lot of, of junk. And down here in Florida, it's a, it's a disaster. It's a disgrace. What does tablets do for charge disk charge rates and potential supercharger speeds? Great question, Joel Miller. I did talk about this. I believe it increases charge rates and discharge rates and charging speeds because the tablet's design reduces heating. I don't know whether that affects cycle life though. 
somebody I'm swallowing. I, I can't stop swallowing. I think it's the microphone's too close to the swallow. I don't know. Um, I don't know what to do about that. Sorry about that. Pull the shirt down a little lower. Maybe that'll help. Can't help the swallowing. Sorry about that. I'll have to work on that. Maybe next time I'll go with a different microphone. Will Tesla ever have a subscription service? I believe the answer to that is yes. They need to make service vans to replace their ice vans. Yes. I don't know about software and chip patents. I'll take your word for that. Do you think Elon underpromised on Battery Day by yes? I think Elon definitely underpromised on Battery Day in many ways. Uh, Dave, I agree that Cybertruck will be simple to produce, but they still have to get it down. Um, do you think the unique designs for Germany as a part of the announced design center was already about the 25k model? Yes. I believe that there will be a unique design for Berlin and for China. I mentioned this earlier in the talk. There will be a unique design for the compact in Berlin and China and maybe in the US as well. Jay Fulton asks about Arkimoto. No, Elon says he doesn't like three wheelers. When are quarter three coverage numbers? Embraer, yes. Matt Burns, uh, somebody asked about quarter three numbers. I don't know. I have a desk mic. I usually think that this mic works better, but apparently not today. Um, I have multiple desk mics and then they have their own set of problems. I'm actually gonna, I'm probably gonna buy a much nicer microphone. Which improved tech will go on the Plaid Model S? All of it. Um, I don't know about volts. I don't know if the volts matter. I think they're 400 volts. I don't know about that. China is not a threat, however the CCP is. Every government is a threat, I agree, but that's why you want to be in multiple countries. What do you think Tesla will do with Panasonic batteries once they can fully transition to their own batteries? I think they have a long-term contract with Panasonic. I don't know how long-term. Um, so I think they're gonna continue buying batteries. I think they have an unlimited demand for batteries. So I think they will continue buying them. Yeah, I, I know, I, I'll work on the mic. This sound thing is a constant challenge for me. I think I'm going to get a, a high-end mic. I think I'm going to spend a couple hundred bucks on a really good mic. Um, do you think Tesla is thinking batter as a service option like Neo? I don't know what that means. You and me are both on essential workers, yes. Now you can hear my heartbeat. <laughs> I'm sure it's irregular. I've been drinking soda. The FSDs already have all the hardware they need for FSD, supposedly, so Sam or camera self thing can't... I don't know what they're. I don't know what they're doing for. I think it's a great question. How they're going to do? Maybe they can retrofit the cameras. Maybe that's cheap. I don't know. I thought Elon said something about a hydrophilic coating on the camera glass. Maybe that's what it's going to be. Nothing wrong with China. China and Japan are workaholics here in this country. We're too. I think they play a lot of video games in China and Japan too. What do you foresee for the first full chassis TerraPress install? When do, I, when do I see the first full chat? I think that's a year or two away at least. Do you think they will ever get into the electronics market? No. Um, will they offer the sales for others? Maybe. Stop drinking sugar water. I, I, you know, I, I usually drink water and I decided to drink a Coke today and I regret it already. I, so if the public, I don't think the public wants three-wheelers. How many is Arkimoto selling? No, people don't want three-wheelers. Maybe in small countries, in, in poor countries they do, but they want cheaper ones than Arkimoto. Arkimoto is too expensive for what they got. How long before most Teslas get the new batteries? Uh, I think the, the iron, I think it's going to be a year or two as it rolls out. Um, quiet leaf blower, that would be fantastic. We didn't talk about HVAC. I'm really excited about the possible for, he, he said we might do HVAC next year. That would be fantastic. Home, home uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning would be spectacular if they went there. I don't know anything about Gordon Johnson. I don't pay attention to him. Charles Bradshaw, here's a prime example. We have 200,000 people dead in this country, murdered by our president. China had their quarantine 90 days and was able to, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm not gonna get into that. If we start having that conversation, this is going to go south fast. I can turn beer into pee. <laughs> is that you, Mark? Is that useful for Tesla somehow? Do you think a powertrain car body Tesla day would be a good idea? I would love it, but I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to do another autonomy day, and maybe they'll mention some more powertrain stuff in that. 20K pre orders at Arkimoto, that's nothing. Uh, India wants three wheelers, I agree. Are the batteries considered solid state since they have? No, I believe the batteries do have liquids. I believe there's a liquid electrolyte in the battery cells. I don't think it's a solid state battery. 
I know I saw Sandy Monroe talking about that. Are all cars getting the new 4680 cells? Not right away, but I think in the long run, they, everything will shift to 4680, probably. I don't think there's a reason not to. I think Drew Baglino said something about the other battery technologies will be able to use some of these things. Favorite Tesla YouTuber is um, Limiting Factor. Without question, Limiting Factor is my favorite Tesla YouTuber. Love Hyperchange. I like a lot of YouTuber, Tesla YouTubers, but Limiting Factor by far and away my favorite. And, and Sandy Monroe. Not really a strictly Tesla, but love Sandy Monroe. Arkimoto, I don't care. Is 4680 the last size increase? That's a great question, Hitchum. I think it's possible that lithium iron phosphate could go bigger than 4680. I'm not sure it makes sense to where there's a big advantage to it. Do I think Tesla will force into 4680 size and tablets design across the board for other manufacturers? Eventually, yes. Should each cell have a self-resetting heat-sensitive circuit breaker? I don't know enough about the technology. The reason I'm not answering that question is I don't know enough to answer it. It's the first time I've seen it. Yeah, it's dry electrode, not solid state. Exactly, Sajal. They use vacuum to electrolyte and battery. I agree with that. When will they make the SMI? What's the SMI? I don't know. The, the semi? How many semis per... I, didn't, I haven't done numbers on Tesla semi. I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, give up on three-wheelers. I'm not talking about it anymore. First TerraPress will be installed in... Uh, moderators, if somebody talks about TerraPress again, just hide it. Um... First TerraPress will be installed in two years. TerraPress, I don't think they talk, I don't know if there's gonna be a TerraPress, but a whole vehicle press, yeah, two, three years. Better to have batteries all the same size. I think they wanna to shift to all the same size. I could see, I think it's most important that they're the same height. And I could see them going to a larger size for lithium iron phosphate because I think it might work, but I don't know. Well, Panasonic, oh, it went fast for a second. Are you driving a Tesla? No, I drive a Volkswagen Passat. I'm getting a Cybertruck next year. I have driven a Model 3 Performance and a Model Y, and I love them both. Um, I don't drive a lot of miles, so I, it's not that important that I have a Tesla. It's a, for society, it's important that people who drive a lot of miles drive Teslas. If they vertically integrate the batteries in the actual car structure, how long of a head start do you think this gives? I think Tesla already has a five plus year head start and I think this accelerates the lead. It may be an eight year head start, but it's not, it doesn't matter if there's a head start. There's the competition, I'm gonna say this again, it's not about competitors. More EV makers are better. Let's, as long as the EV makers make vehicles that are better than ICE vehicles, it's great. Will semi-chargers be at love stops? I would think so. Could Tesla move into the two-wheel market? Elon said no. Amazon is being furnished electric vehicles from Ford and Mercedes at the moment. Yes, and I think they're going to have them from Rivian as well. Um, thoughts on plug-in EVs like the Chevy Volt? Um, I don't know enough about the Chevy. I thought the Chevy Volt, there's the Volt and the Bolt. I thought the Volt was a hybrid. Um, I don't have a lot of thoughts about other EVs yet. I'm waiting to see other good ones. I like what I saw from Volkswagen, even though they're not as good as Tesla's, but they're less expensive and they get the, the tax credit. So I think that's really promising. I would love to see Volkswagen do more of that. And I'd love to see others do more of that. I would love, be, I would love for Lucid to prove me wrong. Um, I don't think they're going to, but I would love for them to, I'd love to see Porsche you know, continue innovating too. On your prediction, is the $5,000 price per stock post split? Post split, yes. These cells will create no, nearly no, no, will not create nearly the heat issues. The old design, the tab is the choke point. The tab is allows the energy a broader path to flow and a shorter path, which reduces heating both. How will robo taxi work when the car drives by itself? Who's gonna charge the car when the car is empty and you sleep at night? The car is gonna pull up to a charging station and there will be a robo charger. Does tablets make cylindrical finally superior to other form factors? I don't know enough to answer that. Limiting factor would be a great channel for that question. Do you think another OEM will ever solve full self driving? I think Tesla's gonna be so far ahead they may end up with a de facto monopoly and they'll license it like Microsoft licensed um, Windows and DOS. When will Tesla sell cars in South Africa? I didn't know they don't. I don't know, South Africa has a lot of instability, a political instability. I, I think they, you know, they have a lot of nickel. South Africa's got a lot of mining. If they can work out their political issues, I think Tesla, I think Tesla could be great for Africa. I just don't know when. Um, I don't care about that lucid. Let's see, Paul from Norway, SpaceX and Tesla Mars ideas, thoughts, colony partnership. I think that we will see Cybertrucks on Mars. 
cyber trucks on the moon cyber trucks on mars uh i think you're going to see and then boring company too boring company is going to play a role in that too i think there's a lot of potential for tesla to interact with spacex and and the boring company to do a lot on the mars colony i actually have a video where i talk about the boring company making uh tunnels that would effectively replace they call them gravity loops that they would go at the right speed and be right and it would make it work. Could you see a, free, this is a great question. I talked about this with Omar Kazi. Warren, could you see a free robo taxi offering that would be ad supported? I don't think it works. I think it might work on the, the robo van with 30 passengers. So the cost per passenger miles down below a penny. And I think it would be more than just ad supported. I see, I see robo taxis with vending machines. I see you sit down in the robo taxi and it offers you a cup of coffee for a buck. It offers you a Coke. You can get a Coke for a buck. And they make money from the vending machines or the software. You can use the software and charge. They charge you money for software. What happens to demand when most homeowners purchase only one car? Robo taxis will mean you may only. Robo taxis will mean that you may only need one car. No, robo taxis mean you don't bother owning a car. Robo. Let me say this. This is. Um, did I lose the comment? Somebody asked this question. It's a great question. What happens to demand when robo taxis become so efficient that you don't need to have one more than one car? You won't need to have any car. You will not bother to own a car. Most people will not bother to own a car. Tesla will produce robo taxis for themselves. It will be more efficient for Tesla to run its own robo taxis in the robo taxi network than to sell cars to you and have you run your robo taxi in the network. Tesla's robo taxis will be on the road all the time and that will advance the transition to sustainable energy more than selling it to me and I keep it in my garage for most of the day. And I, you know, I'm using it for myself. So I believe that the long-term plan is that Tesla's base, and Elon has tweeted this, Tesla is going to stop selling cars um, and they're gonna produce their own robo taxis and you won't bother owning a robo taxi. You will never have to buy insurance. You will never have to replace your tires. You will never have to replace your, I gotta wait, I gotta get an oil change and replace my windshield wipers right now and never have to do that again. Um, it'll all be done in house. It's gonna be spectacular. Let's see. Secretly home. Next two Terra Factory locations. I believe we're going to see a Terra Factory for batteries in Australia and maybe Japan. I think Giga Japan. Japan makes sense for cars. It's the next biggest car market. Um, whether they can get through Japan's bureaucracy and protectionism, I don't know, but I think so. I think they can work a deal with Panasonic which is connected to Mitsubishi, if I'm not mistaken. I think they might be able to work something out with Panasonic to get into Japan. Everything Elon does will ultimately help Mars, yes. You better patent that idea free. I don't have to patent it. Take it. I'm making, I'm fine. Do you think Tesla Megapack is going to replace all power plants eventually? No. Tesla solar and wind, I think there will still, for this is going to be a long, long time before we get off natural gas and other, and, and maybe nuclear, um, but we'll see. I mean, if they can scale up solar, maybe solar and wind can replace a lot. How long until Tesla robo taxis are in full fledged service? I think the end of 2021 is when it starts and it starts to get bigger in 2022 and 2023. With all the machine that builds the machine talk from Elon, I wonder if gigafactories will build themselves at some point in time. I don't think we're there yet, but maybe. Um, free rides, two drink minimum. Yeah, I get, you know, that Brian, that's it. Two drink minimum and you get a free ride. Why not? Um, Tokyo currently has the only idea. No, it's a challenge for Japan to expand. Uh, but I think Japan is the most promising because it's the biggest car market. Should Tesla get into the tire game? I think they are getting into the tire. You know, they didn't, they, they briefly hinted at it. I think Tesla is definitely getting into the tire game. Oh, thank you, Felicia. Let's see. At one point, I think Tesla will have to sell the battery to the competition to avoid monopoly issue. Yeah, I, you know, I definitely think something's going to happen there. I don't know what. How will the robo taxis be cleaned the same way Ubers and taxis are cleaned and, and mass transit's cleaned? They'll, they'll have a central station or multiple central stations and the robo taxi will drive in and get cleaned and anybody who got it dirty will be banned from using robo taxi for 30 days. If you want to ride in robo taxi, you got to be clean. There'll be a camera inside making, you'll be able to tell who did it. Lucid and Rivian are also in the powertrain market, so they certainly won't be alone. Um, I don't know whether Lucid and Rivian are for real. I'm skeptical about Lucid and I don't know enough about Rivian. I hope they both, I hope Rivian delivers and I hope Lucid proves me wrong. Japanese loyalty is big. Japan hates outside car makers. We'll see about that. I don't know. When the vehicles are all communicating each other, we remove human ego from driving, we will see much fewer problems. Even without the communication, they'll be better.
as long as the humans aren't driving. Japan is the fourth car market in the world. Is it US, North America, Europe, and, and China, and then Japan is fourth? Yeah. I think I, I just think that Japan, they love new technology. It's spectacular. I don't have an opinion about mobile uh, AV capability yet. I don't think they're anywhere near Tesla. Flamethrowers, sure. Starlink and connecting Tesla cars. Elon said no to Starlink and cars. He doesn't think it's necessary. Maybe in the, the van. Maybe if they build a minibus, they would put Starlink on that. The, the bandwidth is, is more than an individual driver needs. And there's a the, the Starlink network can only handle so many connections. So I don't think they want in cars. I think they want them in, in um Connections that are that need it more. Are Tesla sold in Japan? I don't know the answer to that. Slide the mic in line with your ear. I'm just going to use a different mic next time. I don't think the ear is going to work for me. <sighs> Largest automobile markets. Yeah, okay. Thoughts on the new battery cell versus projected solid state bat? I think the new battery cell is so good that it may make solid state batteries irrelevant. I don't think solid state is gonna be the, I think the new battery cell is so good that it's, it's reaching, it's, it's gone way beyond what <clears throat> people expected for lithium ion cells, the current lithium ion cells, and I think it may make solid state irrelevant. Thank you, Jay-Z. Do you think a Starlink high-speed connection will allow cloud-based AI processing of self-driving decision-making with onboard processor? I don't think that's necessary. I think the onboard processing will be good enough for self-driving. Let's see, how about a Tesla bus? I have a video called Tesla mini bus or cyber van. Check it out. I, I did an extensive video on that and I love the idea. I think it's gonna be huge. I have better mic, I have a, I have a better mic for propping up and I, I'm gonna buy a, I'm just gonna buy a much better mic, period. I'm, I'm gonna spend the money. <clears throat> Do I think Elon undersold battery day in the schedule to avoid the Osborne effect? No, and I talked about that in the talk. Um, how much should investors be worried about other? I'm not worried about other manufacturers. I think we've been going. We've been going for two hours. Solving. Let me. I'm just going to see. Will Tesla sell loose batteries to the public one day? Not for a very long time. What do I think about VTOL? I think VTOL. So let's talk about VTOL. Uh, vertical takeoff and landing electric jets. That's a great question. I think that the new technology, battery technology, may enable electric jets. I think the problem is that I don't think there's enough market for electric jets. I don't know what the cost structure is for the electric VTOL jet. Um, here's the problem. Robo taxis and especially boring company loops eliminate the short-term market for air travel. It will be easier to take a robo taxi, possibly in a loop, to go, let's say, up to you know three, four hundred miles, than to bother dealing with an airplane. The long haul trips will be Starship point to point. The real long haul trips will be Starship point to point. So that takes out that part of the market. Hyperloop is basically going to be as fast as an airplane. So anything that an electric VTOL jet can do. Hyperloop is going to do 90% of that. So there's just not that. So the market for electric VTOL that I see is really rich people who have a lot of money to waste and will buy a VTOL jet so they can take off from their house and land at their other house. I just think it's a small market. I don't know how much demand there's going to be for that. Will Tesla build a small bat? Oh, by the way, just so you know, I, there's merch. Check the, uh, this is merch. Check the, uh, the Elon. Check the merch but down below. It's probably too late to post that, to show that, but check the merch. Um, yeah, I did just brush my teeth, actually, yes. I don't think I ate lunch yet. Uh, does it look like I brushed my teeth? Why is that, that was a weird question. Why do you ask that question? Um, now, now you're making me self-conscious, I love it. There's still so many people that are clueless about Tesla vehicles. Do you think it would be beneficial for Tesla to start advertising? No, no, no advertising. Tesla does not need to advertise. The advertising is me telling people how great it is and especially people who own Teslas telling people how great it is and letting them drive it. Um, I, I think they could license, I think that, so somebody mentioned that Tesla should buy the rights from Chrysler and make the Tesla Town and Country Grand Caravan. I think that Chrysler or Honda, Honda and, and Chrysler make the leading minivans. I think one of them should make an EV minivan now before Tesla does. That's a great opportunity for somebody to get in there. 
Uh, I don't care about these. How does rideshare market get to $20 trillion? Okay, Jeff D asked the question, how does rideshare market get to $20 trillion? So we're talking about market cap, not market, not revenue. So um, there are in the world two, million, 2 billion vehicles. Let's say Tesla produces, um, let's say 10 million robo taxis for starters. They produce 10 million robo taxis, and each robo taxi operates 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, 15 hours a day, makes $30,000 a year profit for Tesla. Tesla owned the robo taxis. Okay, I'm not talking about you and I have a, a, a Tesla and we now put it out in the robo taxi network, and Tesla makes $10,000 for that. Tesla puts out, um, Ten, it has 10 million of its own robo taxis, which Elon said in Autonomy Day, runs and makes $30,000 a year in each one. That's $300 billion a year in profit, not revenue, profit, from Tesla's, custom, Tesla's owned robo taxi network. $300 billion, that doesn't count all the profit from Tesla Energy, that doesn't count the profit from if Tesla continues selling cars, $300 billion a year. At a price earnings ratio of 30, which is Apple's price earnings ratio and well below Amazon's 150, that is a $9 trillion market cap. And then you've got to add in all the other profit that Tesla's gonna be making. I think they're gonna be have I think they're gonna have 40 million robo taxis in their network by 2030. I think that means $1.2 billion. I think that means $1.2 trillion in revenue globally from the robo taxi network, and it means a market cap of 40 trillion. So Let's see, Mars may take Elon time, but we must do it. Let's see, all right. How safe are the new batteries in accident? Uh, Sandy Monroe said they are safer than current. That it's, uh, number one, they're, they're tighter, they're packed tighter, so they're further from the side, so they're more safe from side impact, and they're very, very structurally sound. Minivan has more space than a car body. Minivan can use less expensive batteries. I agree that minivan could use the lithium iron phosphate packs. Oh, somebody asked me how many, how much Tesla I own. I own uh, between fifty and five thousand shares. They used to say ten and ten and a thousand, but now they they split. Tesla doesn't need Chrysler equipment or intellectual property to be worthless. I forgot about the PE multiple. Thanks. Okay, so we've gone for two hours, and I'm tired, and people are tired of me swallowing. So. Shareholders meeting polls. I don't remember shareholders meeting polls. Oh, um, I, th I don't think we have that result yet. I haven't heard it. Yeah, I, th I guess my theory about, uh, just to address this question, somebody said Japanese OEMs are in trouble. My theory about why Japan will allow a Tesla factory in is because the Japanese companies are gonna start failing anyway. Whether Japan lets them in or not, the Japanese companies are going to fail because their exports are going to get are going to collapse, and so bringing in a Tesla factory will actually create jobs. And I think there's a I think they'll find a way. To, it'll be easier to do Japan than India. I'll say that. And I, I lived in Japan. I love Japan. Um, I think you know wherever Panasonic is based, they have a partnership with Panasonic. They could do something with Panasonic to make it happen, and it would be spectacular. And Panasonic would have the leverage to get the Japanese government on board with it, maybe. All right, I'm gonna done. Thank you all very much for watching. I'm gonna stay with the chat. Uh, I'm trying to do every week, David. Um, I, th I think I may try to make Sunday one o'clock regular. Um, I, I may try to do that. I've been planning to do live stream every week, whether it's Saturday or Sunday, I haven't decided. I think it's gonna be Sunday. So thanks everybody for watching. Really appreciate you uh, paying attention to me and I will talk to you all soon. Thanks very much. Oh, and please buy merch, subscribe, tell your friends, share.